Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, or Plague Biscuit right now. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Expendables 2. What a fantastic idea this is. I love the original Expendable. Expendable was a fantastic isometric shooter that came out on the Dreamcast and the PC sometime in 1999, developed by Rage, the same guys that brought you Incoming, which was also quite fun. Oh, yes, never mind. This is actually the game of the movie. As much as I wish this was a sequel to Expendable, it's not. It is Expendables 2 The Video Game. Truly, this is guaranteed to be something amazing, right? I mean, there's such a fantastic and rich history of movie tie-in video games. Let me think of the last one that was good. Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. And that pretty much covers it, actually. This, this, as far as I can tell, there's probably another one or two that are reasonable, but these are not known for being all that great. Funnily enough, recently it seems like they haven't been doing so many of them, which is, of course, a blessing of the many things that are happening with our industry right now. I can say this. It is rather nice that we have iOS as a dumping ground for all the crap that would otherwise make its way on a console and PC. Unfortunately, this one seems to have slipped through the net by the looks of it. We're going to take a look at it and see if it is one of those rare exceptions that actually doesn't suck. I'm going to go with no. All right, so this was developed by Zootfly. What have they done? Nothing of value for the most part. They did a couple of Panzer Elite action games, which no one seems to have ever heard of or played. They were not the good Panzer Elite games. And a couple of other games that, once again, no one has actually ever heard of, including Prison Break, the video game. Yeah. Turns out that wasn't very good either. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's brace ourselves and head into Expendables 2, the video game, shall we? All right. Well, we've got some reasonable likenesses of the cast, I suppose, to some degree. Although I can barely tell with this guy because there's so many bloody shadows on him. Have a look at the options menu. Needless to say, this is a console port, so I'm not exactly expecting miracles here. Video! Ah, it actually has one more option than the PC version of Darkseid. It's a big surprise. Yeah, you can change your resolution, go full screen on and off, shadows on and off, and that really is about it, aside from the brightness. Audio, meh, subtitles, and then that. I cannot imagine why you would want look invert in this game, and you're going to see shortly why that seems like a terrible idea. Controls. As you can see, you can actually rebind them, which is kind of nice, honestly. It's good that they allow that. And that's really about it. So this this game is designed around four-player co-op, from what I can tell. You can see here you've got the lobby system, which allows you to bring people in. And if you go to a campaign or challenge mode, then you will also match make with people. That's really all there is to it, honestly, aside from leaderboards. Is there anyone on the leaderboard? No! No! No. <laughs> yeah. No one else was stupid enough to own this game on my friends list. Never a good sign. All right. Let's head on in, shall we, for campaign and see exactly what is going to happen. I am not looking forward to this. All right, folks. Welcome to level one of Expendables, the video game. Sometimes we have cutscenes that work. Truly amazing. You know what else is amazing? The incredible voice talent. My intel is that he's involved with the same group that kidnapped our target. He's running some kind of operation out of a factory up ahead. We go in, have a little chit-chat, and see if he can tell us what we want to know. Now, the problem I've got with the voice acting isn't that it's terrible, and it assuredly is. It's because they actually got two of the cast members to provide their voice work, and then everyone else didn't. Now, I'm going to be completely honest here. It sounds like... At least you're putting in a bit of effort there when you get a couple of the cast members to work on your game, but I would rather you got none of them rather than just half of them. It's incredibly jarring to hear the real Lundgren and the real Cruz alongside the fake Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone is one of those characters that is very hard to imitate without sounding ridiculous because more often than not, he sounds ridiculous by default, but it's his own specific brand of ridiculous. All right, what about the game, though? So, it's a fairly standard, or at least it looks like, isometric co-op shooter. Except, it's not really isometric. It's got this horrendous camera control. Like, if it was just isometric from a top-down perspective, the kind of Akari Warriors, or indeed Expendable, you know, quite an appropriate comparison considering, then it would actually be all right. But it's not. It's got this bizarre camera direction going on where it's sort of half isometric, and then it flips the camera around, so you've got this... 
pseudo over the shoulder view and the camera just moves around all the sodding time from different perspectives and it's incredibly annoying to try and aim at anything. The second problem I've got with it is the actual aiming. It just, it is just flat out terribly inaccurate. Some of the characters, I believe maybe one of them, possibly two, have a laser pointer they can activate with their right mouse button. So if you play the sniper character, you'll actually have that. That, I think, is the character I'm currently controlling here. But look at what happens when you don't have that on. Did you see that bullet? Seriously. Did you see where I was aiming and where the bullet actually went? And that is a truly incredible bit of inaccuracy right there. Even the sniper character. Uh, there you go again. Uh, unbelievable. It takes a very special kind of failure to screw up shooting in one direction. I mean, come on. It's not just the sniper character either, no. Pretty much every character has a ridiculously inaccurate weaponry. Now, games like this have been done before. This kind of isometric shoot everything kind of game. A recent example would be Renegade Ops, which does it incredibly well. Funnily enough, Renegade Ops is essentially the Expendables. It's the same bloody idea. The obvious difference being that Renegade Ops is actually good. There are a lot of shooters that do the whole independent fire from movement kind of thing. You move around with WSD or your left stick, you aim with your right stick, and you think that that would be reasonable, but here you aim with the mouse, which you would think makes sense, but because of the ridiculous perspective, it's actually impossible to accurately aim. You can put your mouse over an area of the map which is impossible to actually shoot at. Bearing in mind that you're essentially shooting in two dimensions here. Everything happens in a two-dimensional plane, but the game is 3D. So it's almost like Doom, if you think about it. You know, you can aim pretty much anywhere on the screen as long as you lined up vertically with your target. Here you've got that, but you move your mouse and you can point your cursor at the top of a building and the bullet's going to go in a random direction. It's absolutely incredible how silly that is. Also another minor point, those of you who happen to have double monitors, well, enjoy the fact that it's going to go on monitor one, regardless of what you actually tell it to do. My monitor one is the one to the left. Good games will automatically use the monitor that you select. Bad games, like this one, don't give a damn. So, have fun playing that one off to the left there. Aside from that, the game is just a completely generic co-op shooter. And I would love to say that, hey, it's a co-op game, so it's more enjoyable, but it really actually isn't. Like, it doesn't really benefit you to play in co-op at all. The AI partners are pretty brain dead, but they are at least capable of going to you and reviving you when you go down. I should point out that dying in this game is extremely difficult. It would be extremely surprising to see all four of the Expendables go down at the same time. You can easily revive someone in a few seconds if they're on the ground. They go right back up to full health once again, and you don't really have to worry about that. The AI partners are competent when it comes to getting you back on your feet, and you can actually switch between the Expendables at will if you want to play single player, so just pick the one you want, switch to the one that you need if there's a particular situation where you might need a sniper or whatever, and that it really is about it. Would you like to see some clown car action? Oh, don't worry, you will see it. Pretty much every building in this game, or indeed vehicle that comes in, is a clown car. It will continue to spawn soldiers over and over again, and that's when the game's actually making an effort to hide the spawning. I mean, most of the time, they will actually just appear right in front of you. They will spawn directly in, which is quite incredible, really. Such an amazing effect to watch. What I will say, if there is a positive about this game, it's that the explosions are quite nice. I think that's probably where all the game's development budget actually went into making sure that the explosions looked good. It's not a bad looking game, at least from this perspective, but it's so zoomed out, you can't actually tell that the texture quality is atrocious. You will, needless to say, notice that whenever you get into one of the game's thankfully, blissfully brief cutscenes. So you can pick up weapons off the ground. In this case, I managed to grab an RPG. There seems like there would be a few areas of the terrain that are destructible, but it seems like only scriptable parts of the terrain will actually explode. Things like vehicles and the occasional watchtower that's supposed to go down anyway. Wait, hang on a second. Stop, stop, stop. It can't have been just me that saw that. Really? Let's have a look again in slow motion. And the soldier randomly trips over and does a backflip for no apparent reason. What? The Nobody shot him. He just died for no reason at all. Oh my. You know, it's difficult because it's almost like they're doing this on purpose because they advertise the over-the-top action moments of the Expendables 2. 
Does that mean that guys just randomly throw themselves on the ground for no apparent reason? Is that part of the Expendables video game? Is that deliberately part of it? I, I can never really tell when games are this bad whether or not they're doing it on purpose. I'm going to err on the side of caution, however, and say that you should never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. Now, I've got another scripted scene here which doesn't allow you to advance. You might have seen it about 20 or so seconds ago. We had the same thing where two guys went to the edge of the screen. They couldn't push it forward. I mean, that's pretty standard for player co-op games in this style. But it is, of course, particularly jarring when you're moving the camera around all the sodding time. Thankfully, at least the AI partners don't seem to do that. They don't drag behind all that much. They don't hold up the scene. Whereas human counterparts, well, they very well might. The AI partners can actually disappear off the screen, I believe, as you can see right there. But the player characters can't, so at least it lets you advance a little bit faster there. The main problem I've got with this game is it's just absolutely terrible in every possible respect. Movement is incredibly janky, animation quality is horrendous to say the least. The players look ridiculous when they're running around the place. The aiming is completely and totally inaccurate. The cover system could be described as barely functional. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Even if it does, the animations have a tendency of decoupling and breaking every now and again. The cover system really doesn't seem all that necessary anyway because it's very hard to actually take any legitimate damage in this game. The normal troops just don't hurt you. They really don't. I have barely taken cover throughout this entire playthrough and I've taken no damage, at least as far as I can tell. Even if you do take damage, you can easily be revived if you go down anyway, so it's not really a big concern for anybody. Once again, as you can see, it gets stuck there and decides, you know what we really want to do? Transition to another camera angle. Can we just not have a fixed camera angle? The game would be better if it were just from a fixed perspective. At least the aiming would work for the most part, at least as far as I can tell anyway, and it wouldn't be crazy disorientating. But sadly, it seems like they want to script this cinematic sweeping camera, which just doesn't work from this kind of pseudo-isometric perspective. Another guy that I think didn't actually take any damage there at all falling over. Once again, the clown car appears. Much as I would like to deal with it. Now, each of the characters has a supply of grenades and a couple of different weapons, and these can be upgraded. They're just pretty linear upgrades, so power ammo, things like that. Nothing particularly special as far as I'm concerned. And there are occasionally weapons that you can pick up off the ground, and some of them are pretty good. I mean, the AK-47, as far as I can tell, is just flat out better than the little Uzi thing that I've got, and the RPG is quite neat as well. You can also get things like a shotgun and the occasional other kind of SMG, but not a huge number of pickups. And since your main weapons have infinite ammo anyway, and some of them are extremely capable, it's not really particularly concerning. We don't need this. <laughs> we don't really need this. Is this giving me the authentic Expendables experience? I certainly hope not. I haven't seen Expendables 2 yet, but the first one did not do well. How do you screw up a movie like that? It's what I've really got to ask anyone that creates that. Come, come on, look at your cast. All you have to do is have them fight the entire movie and spit cheesy one-liners. That is all that is required. And this, this is, why is that there? Okay, so they've got what's uh, called signature kills, which sounds like a really cool idea. It's like, hey, you know, these are the kind of kills for the movie and some special stuff. But it zooms into the character that's doing them and doesn't allow any of the other players on the screen to actually see what's happening. Are you kidding me? Why did you think this was a good idea? This I cannot imagine. Ah, <sighs> God. There are bugs, and then there are just stupid design choices, and that was definitely falling into the latter category there. Good lord. At least this game's only $15, or your regional equivalent. By regional equivalent, of course, we mean dollar equals euro, right, Steam? Yes, indeed. So, 15 euros, 12 pounds, 99, 15 dollars. If this was a full-priced game, oh, good lord, it would actually be one of the worst games we have seen in a very long time. It, even movie tie-in games these days are at least functional, and this game for the most part seems to work, but it just flat out fails to be an enjoyable shooter. And that's actually pretty hard. I mean, a little four-player co-op shooter, you would think it would be fun, but it isn't. And I think most of the blame has got to go on the gunplay. Because the gunplay is so ridiculously inaccurate, you don't get the satisfying punch of the weapon or the satisfaction of killing enemies. It, it's almost like rolling the dice as to whether or not the enemies are actually going to fall down one way or the other. 
Ah, it's okay. The clown car is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's always wonderful to see them spawn and drop in from that black abyss that seems to be inside the vehicle. You know what? It wasn't within our development budget to actually model it. I have a hard time telling whether developers like this are actually trying, especially when we introduce the best power-up in the game, the invisible shotgun. No, I'm deadly serious. Have a look at the character with the green ring around him. Fear my invisible gun! Also, what the hell is that? It's not a shotgun, it's a goddamn fireworks dispenser. Oh, good lord. Well, they've officially managed it. They've managed to make aiming even harder by making your gun model disappear. And finally someone died. It was actually our fault, as opposed to the enemies. That's the cute thing about it. For the most part, when you die, it's because of stuff that you trigger in the environment. Oh, he's standing right next to the jeep. Let's just blow it up and hurt ourselves in the process. Actual enemies don't generally do a lot of damage, unless it's some of the special enemies with rocket launchers or big shotguns and things like that. One way or the other, though, you can get right back on your feet anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh. How do you muck this up? Really now? How do you do it? Well, apparently it's entirely possible, as you can very clearly see. Well, the game also has vehicle sections in it, but we don't get to see that in the first mission. You know what? That's probably for the best, because the last thing I want to see is how badly they butcher a vehicle section. Good God in heaven. Now, I don't view this as a big deal, but I'd like to laugh at it anyway, since I'm having so much fun tearing this game apart. I I'm really not. I mean, you might think that I like this stuff. No, I don't want games to be bad. Are you kidding me? Especially not when I paid money for them. I want the game to be good and fun and enjoyable and break the curse of movie tie-in games, which will never sodding happen in my lifetime by the sounds of it. No, I'm not happy about that at all. It depresses me. One way or the other, uh, just a minor point that some people will absolutely hate, the game also has day one upgrade DLC. This isn't even DLC. This is not downloadable content. Why don't they just label it downloadable cheat? Because that's essentially what it is. You can buy for the low, low price of 99 cents or your regional equivalent, the ability to max out all of the stats of a specific character. Only one character though, only one. This is, by the way, a terrible idea, not only because you're paying 99 cents to essentially skip the progression curve of the game, but you also don't necessarily get the choice of character that you want because someone else might have already picked it. So why even bother? Bad enough that they have the gall to charge $15 for this schlock, but then they want to charge you 99 cents for a cheat. Back in the day, cheats used to be free. Occasionally, you could call a cheat hotline when GameFAQs didn't exist, but good lord. I cannot imagine why I'd want to do that. You can notice the fairly terrible animations there for being in cover. It's okay, we can shoot through the sandbags, right? Also, when you attach to cover, it sort of jumps you to the area that it wants you to be in. It doesn't fluidly put you into cover either, so... Yeah, even that part of the game is horrendously screwed up. This is it. There you go again. Very, very obvious. If I were to look for positives, I would say the explosions look pretty good. And I would say that they have a fair number of enemies on the screen at any given time. And at least some of the vehicles explode in a fairly satisfying manner, blowing those guys away. But since it is essentially a clown car here and... You've got enemies that run out one at a time. It's not really even all that challenging. It would be nice to get a bunch of enemies in one place that I could blow up with an explosion or things like that. Oh my god, they even fire in sync. L look at the muzzle flash. They are firing in sync. They didn't even bother to make it look remotely realistic in any way. God, what is this? A British musket firing line? I actually have to wonder if they genuinely spawn bullet components. I have a feeling most of them probably don't. They're just there for show. Good lord, it's like the game randomly determines whether or not you're going to be taking damage. I think the last movie tie-in game I did on this channel was probably Top Gun, and Top Gun is amazing in comparison to this game. At least Top Gun got most of its fundamentals correct, for the most part. You know, the combat was pretty fun, it looked quite nice, it was reasonable to fly around and do some cool stuff, but... This game doesn't even get its fundamentals right. When games like this come out, I have to wonder if the developer is just incompetent or they deliberately just phoned it in. I'm going to go with column B on this one. Also, notice that you can't actually see where your character is half the time or aim because things decide to come in and block the camera off. Which is silly because they could very easily fix that. You can see there's a system right there. When I deploy a smoke grenade, it shows an outline. So that would be really, really easy to do. But they decided not to bother. So... Well, there you go. And I think decided not to bother is something I wish this developer would have done. But hey, gotta get paid, right? Gotta get food on the table. I think they knew this was gonna be terrible. At least that explosion looks half decent, but 
Want to see some bad texture quality? Wow, check out the grate on the floor. Oh, wow. We're looking for a Chinese businessman. Where should we be looking? <coughs> sure, yeah, that guy. He's been held in the old industrial sector a few miles northeast, but you'll be taking that info to your graves. He's knowing you. We need immediate evac! Get us out of here! It's gonna blow! You know, the sad thing is, the cutscenes are probably the best looking parts of the game. Uh, that, that's quite an impressive explosion, that's a nice little scene there, but... Uh, oh, wow. Ugh, I feel tainted by just playing this. This is on my Steam account forever now, I can't get rid of it. I cannot do it. I wonder if it's possible to email Steam and ask them to remove it, or remove any evidence that this game ever existed from my personal Steam account. It's abysmal! It's no E.T., but by modern standards, this is a terrible video game. Well, at least I guess I can show you the upgrade system. We can give it a try. We go to upgrade one, and nope, never mind. Looks like he couldn't stand the game any more than I could. Can't really blame him. Expendables 2, the video game. Please, for the love of God, do not buy this. It's not even funny bad. It's not even so bad it's good. It's just plain bad, and I feel even sicker for playing it. I'll see you next time.